You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV Product Reviews. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're going to take a look at this. This is the Ricoh GR Digital 4 point and shoot camera and it retails for $599. Now there is so much that I loved about this camera that I can't even go through all of the good stuff. So I want to stick to the stuff that really stood out to me. Now first of all, I love the design of this camera. It's made to fit in your pocket and it does. I mean, it's just about the size of my hand. It's very, very small. In fact, it's so small, one of the things you can do is you can shoot one-handed and you can hold this nice and steady. It's really nice. I love how the buttons are uh, put right where you can reach them and this interface is really easy to use. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now when you turn this off, it hides the lens and so you don't actually have to have a lens cap on there, which is pretty cool. And when you turn it on, what will happen is it'll cycle through everything and blam, there goes the lens and it pops right out and you're ready to shoot. Now this is a 28 millimeter equivalent and it's f1.9. So this will shoot in really low light and this is a 10 megapixel camera. So you get really nice high resolution images. Now I said earlier that the interface is really intuitive. Now at first it took me a little while to figure out how to use this thing because um, it wasn't readily apparent which buttons to push. There's a button on the top that helps you adjust things and there's an adjustment button on the back. There's one on the side. There's this little wheel here. So at first I had to go back to the book and sort of look through everything and figure it out. But once I figured out the system, it was so easy to use. I just sort of forgot about that book and was easy to just zip through here and do all kinds of things. So let me show you uh, some of those features here and we'll start with this dial on the top. We've got uh, several settings and the first thing that I noticed is there's a little teeny button up here that locks this dial so you can't accidentally move that out of the mode which is nice with the camera that you're throwing in and out of a bag or out of your pocket. But it's got uh, modes that are uh, common on most cameras. You've got full manual mode, so you can shoot in full manual mode and uh, adjust everything yourself. There is shutter priority mode for action stuff, aperture priority mode, and then program mode where the camera can set most of the things. And then there's just this green uh, camera there, and that is full auto. So you can just pick this up, put it on the green camera, and start shooting, and you're ready to go. Now there are also three custom uh, scenes right here that you can set up the camera to do exactly what you want it to do, specifically how it handles color, or maybe it's black and white, or maybe it's doing some custom uh, filters, whatever. But instead of having to go through the menus each time, you can set those up to one of three. So maybe you've got one set up for black and white photography, one for uh, high, vivid, really colorful scenics, and one for uh, something else. But you can just go right to those. And then there's another dial here. It's called the scene dial. Now the scene mode is really cool. Let me show you really quickly. We're going to step through this scene mode right here on the back of the camera. Now the scene files, when I hit the menu button, it goes in here and allows me to select different scenes. Now the first one is dynamic range where I can take two photos and in camera it will put these together to give us higher dynamic range. There's this one right here, it's an interval composite and the best way to describe this is it allows us to shoot um, star trails and so it's a really long exposure and it gives this really interesting effect here. Now this one, it just blew my mind, the skew correct mode. So I played with this all over the place and when the camera isn't directly perpendicular with a flat subject or a square subject, it will fix that in camera. It is really crazy and you can see here some examples of how we fixed a book that was uh, off kilter and some other things and it really works well. Now the last thing here is movie mode. Now the movie mode allows you to shoot movies with sound. There's a built-in microphone. Now what I can do here is I can push this up, this magnifying glass right here and I can see the details. Now one thing you'll notice that this only shoots VGA so it's not high definition. It is standard definition video and so I wish this had high definition but it doesn't. So as you can see, that scene mode is, is really cool. Now there are some other things you can do here with these buttons. One of the things I really love is this adjustment button right here. And then you can just push that and you get to all kinds of settings. So let me walk you through that really fast as well. When you push this adjustment dial, this has a push and then you can go back and forth on it. So it's a multiple uh, select switch. So push and back and forth, it's really nice. So when I push that, this turns on and off this different menu items right here. So once I've pushed that, I can use my multiple selector here to change my, uh, my white balance here. I can go to the right and it goes to ISO. Then I can change my different ISO. I can go to the right again. I can change my RAW or JPEG file format. And I can also ch change my uh, aspect ratio, which is really nice. So there's four by three, three by two, 16 by nine, and a square one by one, both in RAW and JPEG, which is really nice. I go to the right. 
And this is where I change my color settings. So I can do vivid, really vivid color standard. I can do some custom settings. I've got two of those in there. I can go black and white. I can do uh, high contrast, black and white. There's all kinds of cross processing. So there's all kinds of options in there and you can even create your own. Now I can go to the right here again. Now this is my metering mode. I've got multi-center and spot metering and I can even choose my autofocus point. And so where the camera is focusing, I can change that as well. So a lot of uh, things I can do just by pushing this adjustment dial and diving right into the menus. All right, now one other thing that I noticed about this camera is that it has awesome macro capabilities. In fact, a lot of the macro stuff that we were shooting, I got so close that the lens was actually touching the subject and I could still focus. It's crazy how close you can get to this thing. Uh, so if you're a macro photographer, you're going to love this camera. Now the other thing that this has that's a little bit different from any other camera that I've seen uh, for a point and shoot, this has an electronic level gauge. In other words, it not only um, detects if you're uh, tilted left or right, but it also detects if you're up or down uh, correct. And so you can make sure it is absolutely square. And that is great for shooting buildings or anything where you have to watch those converging lines. Or if you're a scenic photographer to make sure the horizon is straight. That is pretty darn awesome. Another thing this camera has that I really love, it has a multiple exposure mode so you can actually shoot up to five overlapping images and so you can do some really creative things. Now speaking of shooting, one of the things that uh, people talk about with point and shoot cameras is the autofocus. How fast is the autofocus? Well this autofocus on the Ricoh that I saw was extremely fast. How fast was it? Well it was so fast that I sort of just forgot it was there. Now one of the things that you may have heard is if you're doing a job really really well nobody will notice because you're not thinking gosh I wish this thing would focus and that's how this camera is it just focuses super super fast. In fact this has some uh, modes that you can actually preset the focus and then when you uh, click the shutter release it just shoots immediately so it's really really fast. And another thing this has I mentioned earlier you can uh, shoot with this one hand well, you can do that because this has an actual image stabilization built into the camera and so it's a sensor shift image stabilization and it really makes sure things are blur free and look really, really nice and sharp. Now on the bottom here, let me shut this off really fast and flip this over to show you some stuff on here. Now this has a, a little battery that uh, lasts a long, long time and there's a charger that comes with this and uh, right in here is where the uh, memory card goes. Now I shot this uh, with my, I was using this Kingston card here, the 16 gigabyte card, had great uh, results with that. Now the other thing this allows you to do though, if you have a Wi-Fi card, or an iFi card, excuse me, an iFi card, one of those wireless cards, you can stick that in here, and this camera supports fully the iFi cards, and so you can actually do wireless transmission to your computer and back things up and have things all syncing without ever having to plug this into a computer, which is really, really cool. Now another thing that you can do here, if this battery happens to die on you, you're out on location somewhere, you can actually load this up with two uh, AAA batteries and so you can stick those guys in there and you can keep shooting so those will pop right in there as well. So if you want you can use those. Um, you don't get great battery life out of those AAAs but it will still work. So let me throw this guy in there, throw my little Kingston card back in there as well. All right and that closes right up. Now the other thing that I love about this, um, it shoots both raw and it shoots RAW in DNG format, so it's ready to go right into Photoshop or Lightroom. You can uh, shoot really high resolution images. And it also shoots JPEG files, so you have a choice of shooting one or the other or both at the same time. And so I really love that. Now there were some things that I didn't like about this camera. They're few and far between, but let me just mention a few of them. One is that this does shoot video, so that's a plus, but it isn't high def video. It's old school VGA video. So although it's great for shooting uh, standard definition video, I wish it would shoot high definition video to be in, uh, so it can compete with this millennium of cameras. So it's old school video. So I didn't like that. Um, the other thing is this is a great camera for scenic photographers because it's got a really wide angle uh, lens, but this is a fixed lens. In other words, it doesn't zoom in and out. And so if you want to shoot portrait uh, photography and take pictures, uh, uh, photos of people, this is not the camera for you because it's just a wide angle lens. So if you want to get any nice close portraits, it's going to distort faces. It just doesn't look very good. So for portrait photography, this is not a great camera. Now one other thing that I saw and that is that the built-in JPEG compression. So if you're shooting JPEG only, some of that compression wasn't very good. And so I saw, shot some uh, scenes. I went out on my mountain bike and rode in the mountains. And when I looked at those images at full resolution, I could see that the mountains and some of the detail in the rocks and the cactus 
Well, they, it just went away. So those fine details were lost. Now they did show up in the raw images, but in the JPEG built-in stuff in the camera, it wasn't very good. So if you're shooting JPEG only, watch out for that. You can tweak those settings in the camera. So make sure you do that to get the best results. So my summary is, this is a great camera. If you're a scenic photographer or you wanna, uh, if you're a person that's out traveling, you wanna do some documentary photos, um, shooting uh, macros or scenic specifically, this is a great camera. It's super lightweight, it's easy to transport. It will fit in your po uh, pocket so you can carry that around. And so I really, really like this camera. Again, it's the Ricoh GR Digital 4 and it retails for $599. Now there's a lot of stuff that we weren't able to talk about about this camera because it really packs a lot of stuff into a small package. And so for full details, make sure you visit us at the Adorama Learning Center where we've got all kinds of information about this camera that we weren't able to include in the video. Well, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.